Out here with the birds this morning. This is a 40 foot gooseneck. And we are building the biggest honking tiny house I have ever seen. Day one of the tiny house build. Today I am leveling out the floor. Hi, my name is Robert. And I will be working on this tiny house, putting it together along with my brother and his wife and my wife and whoever else happens to join us. Um, this is a 40 foot gooseneck. And we are building the biggest honking tiny house I have ever seen. We are gonna probably end up doing a cantilevered floor off the edge, um, adding on with some angle iron and uh, possibly making it as wide as 116 inches. Um, from trim to trim. Like I said, it's 40 foot long, so yeah, we're just trying to figure out the floor plan exactly right now and what would be structurally sound. I have uh, minimal professional construction experience. Most of my experience has been from repairing, remodeling, and building all of my own stuff for family, friends, um, but mainly, mainly for, yeah, just myself. So, it's not like I've got tons and tons of experience, but uh, construction is one of those things that you really can learn by doing, and uh, that's what I've done. The first time you do something, you probably won't do it all that great, um, but the more you do it, the better you'll get. So, anyways, this is kind of a, a big, big undertaking, but I'm pretty confident that uh, it will be very doable. My only concern is putting on a 40-foot trailer. Um, I'm not a structural engineer. And I know that there's going to be some weight on this thing. And so my concern would not be that the structure is not sound, but when it's moving down the road, how is it going to bend and move? And um, how's the structure on top of it going to do? So right now I'm leveling it, getting it as level as I can. Well, getting it as perfectly level as possible. Um, and uh, shoring up underneath it so that when I'm building on top, I don't have to worry whether I'm really level or not. That's going to be very important. Um, pulled off the first boards on either side, trying to decide whether I want to pull off all the boards or leave them. They do add stability. They also add weight to the trailer. Um, and so I need to decide whether I'm going to pop those boards off as well. Um, the main problem with leaving them on is that they come up higher. They come up higher than the edge of the metal. And I want to bolt into the metal my joist so I've kind of got to figure that out, whether I'm going to plane across the tops to make little grooves for my 2x4s to sit um, for the joists, or actually there'll be 2x6s going across. Um, yeah, so anyways, this is the first day, just kind of getting it, everything in order. We're still trying to figure out the floor plan, and it should be pretty exciting. I'm out here with the trailer, and as you can see, I am painting it. Um, I'm just going over it just with one coat. Um, you can see this is this is what it looks like. So they painted the outside of the trailer, but they did not paint anything that you couldn't see. So you can see the black paint. Uh, maybe you can see you can see the black paint on that side, but then there is nothing on this side. So, anyways not making too big of a deal out of it. Um, the stuff isn't all that corroded and once the house is on top of it, it'll just have to contend with the moisture from underneath. Um, but yeah, anyways, going to be uh, priming and painting what I can reach and get to and uh, I've got my angle grinder to uh, help me with some tough areas if I see a lot of rust. Uh, there are a couple places that were really rusted out for whatever reason. Um, and especially joints and stuff, I'm going to try to do a good job of just covering them, priming them. So yeah, lots of fun. Right, so I ended up uh, painting just the tops mainly and uh, yeah, getting to places I won't be able to get to once I um, put down the boards. But I just didn't want um, pressure treated wood being on top of these metal studs without there being some sort of paint protection between it because the ACQ lumber it uh, it just corrodes metal so anyways now that I've got uh, some uh, 
some paint on top here. Um, and I've got rusty metal primer on a lot of the joints I can get to just spray paint it on. It'll provide a little more protection than it had. Um, not too worried about it once uh, there's a house on top. It won't have to deal with any more rain coming down on it. It'll just be the moisture from below. So yeah, I'm going to get started putting down the decking to nail the foundation onto. Alright, so I've got all of the uh, decking on. Um, they're about 18 inch on center apart and uh, they're screwed down at each metal rung going across here so that's about 150, 150 screws. About. Um, and then up here because I'm going to actually start my wall here. Um, I'm not taking all the way to here, so there's a little bit of space for me to put siding on and all that kind of stuff and fit my tools in there. Um, so because of that, I've got extra boards going across here that will make it so that this wall, since it's going to be you know, a pretty fairly heavy wall, is going to be on there, isn't going to sag. And then down at the other end, I'm going to be terminating my wall onto the metal itself onto this. It's going to come to about right here. So that's where my wall is going to sit. So um, as you can see there's quite a big difference between the height of the end of the trailer and the rest of it. So basically I'm just going to cut my 2x4 to be whatever that um, uh, distance is from there and so my end 2x4 will be just uh, cut to fit on there. So yeah. So it's going to be from there all the way to the end. So yeah, and I've got all my wood cut as well. So 109 inches. Um, actually 108 7 eighths. And then my um, 10 foot 2x4s that are going to be um, nailed or screwed rather onto the ends. So yeah, getting ready.